In this episode of Design Patterns, let me show you how to simplify object construction with builders. The builder pattern is very simple yet helpful. The whole idea is about moving the construction logic of given objects to a dedicated class called a builder. How exactly does this make construction easier? Well, that all depends on how complicated the construction is in the first place. Let's start with a simple example and work our way up. A textbook case of constructing a car from small parts. First, let's create our car class with some properties. Let's say a wave. Mm, door count and a color. As you can see, all have some defaults. Not very reasonable defaults, but still it's a good idea to have defaults everywhere. So what we want to do is substitute those defaults with actual value that makes sense. Let's do it in a constructor, like we should. All right, so now we have this car. We can construct this car directly or construct it using a builder. At this moment, the builder doesn't give us much, well, except maybe providing some reasonable default values. Let's introduce this builder and see where we get in the end. Let's make this builder a member of the car class. And the builder will contain all the properties the car contains, but with some, let's call it reasonable logical defaults. Let's say with two tons and having four meters, four doors, and let's say we like the black color. Cool. Now, how to use the builder to create an actual car? Let's define what the result type of our building process will be. And a creation method. This method, for now, will simply create a new car passing all those properties contained inside. Cool. So what we want to do now is add methods for each property we want to override with a non-default. As a return type of all those methods, let's return the builder itself. This will allow us to chain calls and make a simple fluid interface. So we'll set wave. Okay, we have our setters, so let's finally create a car. Auto car, hmm, auto car, post car, builder, let's create our builder instance and let's override some defaults. Color, ah, let's make it a blue car, maybe having only two doors, because why not? And not so long, maybe 3.5 meters. In the end, create. So what we've done here is use our builder to create a small two-door blue car. Right now it might not seem like much, but we already can see one benefit of using a builder. You can see the builder can provide reasonable defaults and we not need to care ourselves with them. But is this enough to justify the overhead of using builders? As you can see, it's a lot of code added. As usual, it depends. By having builders, you keep the construction logic in one place rather than scatter it around. The advantages of builders become more apparent when the construction logic gets more complicated. Let's consider adding some parts to our car and maybe introduce a car type. And we class type and let's call it a family car and a sports car. And of course we need to add a type here and provide it with a default. So add a type here. For now let's keep the create method like it is. Let's introduce some car parts. For example a class representing an engine. This engine will have power with some unreasonable default because 
we want the default to be explicitly overridden in the constructor. Let's add an engine to our car. First, let's introduce an alias for it. And what else can we add? For example, let's add some wheels. Not just the simple wheels. Let's create two wheel classes. Let's introduce an interface for a wheel. Call the wheel. Ah, for now, let's imagine that this interface has some abstract methods inside. And let's introduce concrete wheels. So, a standard wheel, or a standard tire would be a better name for it. Ah, let's go with wheels. For simplicity, let's keep those classes empty. And a heavy duty wheel. wheel. So let's make our car having an arbitrary number of wheels. Because you know, cars can have any wheels they want, right? Alright, so we extended our car with a type, an engine and some wheels. Let's get back to our builder and add some properties and methods to it which will allow it to create a car just like we want. We don't want to explicitly specify what type of car it is. We would like the builder to figure it out for itself. So instead of specifying an engine class, let's give the builder simply engine power. Make it 100 horsepower. A very, very tiny car. And also, let's give it wheel count. Four by default. Of course, all of this needs their own center methods. Here we go. Now, let's get back to our construction logic. Our builder needs to become smart enough to know how to fill the type, the engine, and the wheels. So let's add some simple logic. For example, if power is about 500 horsepower, well, let's assume we are dealing with a sports car. Otherwise, it obviously it has to be a family car, because why not? So here's our type. We also want to create a default engine. So make unique engine and pass it our horsepower. Now we come to wheels. Here the logic starts getting complicated. Could we have sports car with more than four wheels? Well, probably not. So let's assume we cannot have sports car with more than four wheels, but we know that more than four wheels needs their heavy duty. We also know sports car usually need some heavy duty wheels, otherwise they will fall off, right? Science. So let's complicate our construction logic a bit. Wheel collection. We move it to our car. And just to keep things more grounded in reality, let's add a truck type. Let's create a helper method which will return our wheels. It will be a template. logic will look like this. Wheel count is above 4 and wheels heavy duty wheel else standard wheel. Cool. But what about the power? Well, here we need to make the logic a bit more complicated. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. The type of our car and the type of our wheels are strictly dependent on the wheel count and its power. We never, in the application, explicitly say what type of the car we want or what type of wheels. 
we never explicitly even create the engine because it's not needed. All this logic is contained in one simple builder class. And to create a truck, we simply change the wheel count to, for example, six. Do trucks have six wheels? Maybe. And let's set its power to, I don't know, 800 horsepower. Not know if trucks have this many, but eh, who cares? So now we have our blue two-door, ah, not so large, six-wheeled, 800 horsepower truck. And all the logic to create such truck is here, in this creation method, in the builder itself. This very simple example shows how a builder can become a single place for all your construction logic. The more complex this logic becomes, the more apparent the need for builder becomes. Things get even more interesting when the builder starts abstracting away different subclasses. For example, different subclasses of a car. Of course, as with everything. Consider all the pros and cons of builders before adding them to your code. They can add a lot of unneeded boilerplate and can themselves have a lot of dependencies. Just look at how many lines extra we got just by adding a simple builder. And also note that this logic can become a mess when you introduce a large number of dependencies. In most complex scenarios, it might be a good idea to combine builders with abstract factories, which we already talked about. Okay, I hope I showed you how builders work, how can you use them, how can you encapsulate creation logic in a one simple class. Hope you found it informative. If you have any question, post them down below, click like, Keep subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.